Today I'm going to show you guys how to take the touchscreen off your SVL1 Pro and install the 12864 kit that we came out with. Let's get to it. The SV1 Pro is actually a pretty nice machine, but like many of the printers on the market that come with these touchscreens, you'll soon find that there's not many options you can actually get to with them. They don't display them at all, and some of those things are PID settings for your hot end, acceleration, jerk, steps per millimeter, those kind of values. As soon as you want to start messing with your printer, you'll soon realize how limited these are. These are great for beginners, but once you really want to start getting into your printer and changing things and making your own, whether that's changing out your extruder for a different one, tuning it so you can print faster, or whatever that may be, these soon fall on their face. Now, while these screens do have an update slot on them, the source code for them, because these actually run their own separate operating system, are not able to be customized. So what we do is we develop these kits to put a more traditional 12864 screen on them so you guys can take back control of your printer and get more features and have an easier time upgrading. So we're gonna go from start to finish installing the kit. The kit consists of a longer cable for the SV01 Pro, the LCD, the bracket, and the mounting block to adapt the bracket to fit on the printer. So we're gonna go step by step and show you guys how to install that, including doing the firmware setup. So the first thing we need to do is take this screen off. To do that, just push up on the bottom and then lift it off. You'll then need to disconnect this cable here. You've got the bracket here. We have three screws. We're going to unscrew those. And then save these screws for later. So now with the printer on its side, we're going to go ahead and take out these six screws that are on the bottom panel here. Now that we have the screws removed, go ahead and take the bottom panel off. If you notice here, the fan's connected. You can leave it connected, just make sure to not disconnect it. So now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the stock LCD cable. And we're gonna take our new one and pay attention. There is a little key on them. You're gonna line it up with the key on the socket. So now we have the new cable installed. We're gonna go ahead and pull this up over the top and then put this panel back in. If your fan came unplugged, make sure to plug it back in. It goes into the fan header right here. So you'll notice we'll have extra cable here. We're gonna go ahead and just shove this back into the case. You're gonna wanna leave about six inches or so. Go ahead and set the printer back down. The next step is we're going to install the new adapter bracket right here where the old one was. So now that we have the LCD cable run, we're going to go ahead and install the mounting bracket. We're going to use the screws we took off the original one and put it through the three holes and then into the holes on the side of the printer. So now we're going to assemble the LCD bracket. We're going to take it out of the bag. We have the included screws. We're going to set these off to the side for now. We're going to grab our LCD here. And you're not going to use these small cables because we use the longer one for this printer. But you are going to want to take the little knob out. Go ahead and take the screen out of its baggie. We're going to put this in the LCD bracket, just like this. You want to make sure the holes on the LCD PCB line up with the mounting posts on the bracket. I'm gonna go in the bag of screws and we're gonna take out the small coarse thread screws for the LCD. We're gonna go ahead and put the screws in each of the four corners. You can see the bottom two here and the top two there. Okay, so we have the LCD installed. We're gonna to need to put the knob on. It just presses onto the post here. So there we go. Now all we have to do is put the two screws in here into the new bracket. Let's go ahead and put the screws in and line up the screws with these two holes.
We're going to go ahead and connect the cable to the port here. Now remember, we do have extra slack inside. So we can pull a little out if we need to. And then plug it into the third header here. Just like that. So now at this point, we need to update the firmware on the printer because nothing's going to show on the screen until we do. So let's switch over to the computer. I'm going to show you guys how to do the firmware. So to get the firmware, we're just going to go to the TH3D Help Center. That can be found at support.th3dstudio.com. And I'm going to type SV01 Pro, and you'll get the SV01 Pro firmware link. You can see here the SV01 Pro firmware. This is the link we want. And then on the firmware page here, we're going to scroll down and click the download button. You get a prompt here. Go ahead and click I agree after reading through this and then hit download. This is going to download a zip file to your computer. Once that zip file is downloaded, we're going to go ahead and open and extract it. So I'm just going to extract this to a folder on my computer. I like to put this in a folder specific to my printer firmware, which I have on my D drive here. You can put this wherever you want, but this is where we're going to put it for this video. Now that this is extracted, we're going to go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. Once Visual Studio Code is open, go ahead and hit open folder. And then we're going to go to the folder where we extracted the firmware. So we're going to go ahead and double click the firmware folder and then hit select folder. And the firmware is going to open up in VS Code. Go ahead and click I trust the authors and click yes, I trust the authors. Now on the left hand side, you're going to want to expand the Marlin folder and then double click configuration.h. Now, if this is your first time using Visual Studio Code, I would recommend giving it a minute or two and look and make sure there's no pop-ups coming up in the lower right-hand corner because it does do initial downloads for different libraries and updates. And if your Visual Studio Code is asking you to install an update, go ahead and do that before proceeding. So and all we need to do now is remove the two forward slashes in front of the defined Solval SV01 Pro line. Do a control S to save. You can see the little bubble disappears here. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the little platform IO build check mark in the bottom left hand corner. Now, this is going to take a minute or two or more, depending on the speed of your computer. If you have an older, slower computer, this may take up to five minutes. But you can see down in the bottom here, it's going to give you an output telling you what it's doing. It'll download some libraries and then it's going to compile the files. So we're going to let this build and then we'll come back and show you guys how to update the firmware. As you can see down at the bottom of the screen here, we have a success. And if we look here, we can see the file name is UF2-214714-202303170. Now this file name will change every single time and that's because that's what these boards need to update the firmware. So I have my SD card. I'm gonna put it into my card reader on my computer. One thing I do recommend is make sure your drive is formatted as a FAT32 file system with a 4096 allocation unit size. So I'm just gonna reformat this just in case. And then I'm gonna reopen the folder and we're just going to drag the bin file from the folder here. So if you look here, PIO build STM 32F103 RC Creality, and we can see the bin file here. Now, if you have multiple bin files here, you can go ahead and hit the little trash can here and it will clean that folder out and then hit the checkbox again and it will recompile. You could also right click on this and hit reveal in file explorer. And you can also just look at the date on the file and whatever the newest file is, that's the one you want to flash. So I'm just going to copy the bin file over to my drive. So I'm just going to drag this over here. And now I'm going to take the SD card out of my computer. And now it's time to flash the printer. So as you can see here, the printer's powered off. I'm going to put the SD card into the printer's SD slot. I'm going to go ahead and plug the printer in and turn the power switch on. You can see the logo came up on the screen and you see the TH3D Marlin boot screen. Now, the last thing we need to do before we start printing is to reset the EEPROM. We're going to press the button on the LCD, go down to configuration and then select Reset EEPROM. You'll hear a beep from the screen, and at this point, we're all done. We can go ahead and use the printer. The LCD kit is installed, and the firmware is updated. You can go ahead and peel the protective film off the LCD screen. And we're going to tell it to Auto Home just to make sure everything's working. And just like that, we're ready to go. So I'm just going to show you a couple of the options we have here in the firmware. 
if we go to the configuration menu, you see we have options for the BL Touch. In this case, it's a CR Touch, but they use the BL Touch code. We have our Z offset and baby stepping. This will combine the offset for your probe and the baby stepping into one setting. We can turn the filament sensor on and off. We have different preheat configurations, so you can change your PLA temperature, your fan speed if you want to. We have the EEPROM store and reset. And then if we go into advanced settings, we have even more options. So we have our speed limits for the different axes on the printer. We have our acceleration settings. We have jerk settings. This is how hard the printer changes direction on a motor. We have steps per millimeter. So if you change your extruder, you can adjust this right from the screen here or even from the firmware. We also have in the temperature menu, different PID settings. If you want to tune your hot end, you can actually do it right from the LCD screen here. And then we also have unload and load settings for when it does a filament change. As you can see, as I ran through the LCD menu options, you get a lot more control over the printer if you want to start tuning things, whether that's pumping the print speed up, which usually involves changing your jerk and acceleration values. You can also change the steps per millimeters on all your axes. And the most common use of that is if you change your extruder out or if you want to just calibrate the existing extruder to get it even more spot on than it already is by default. I hope this video was clear and concise to show you guys how to install this kit. These are available on our website for purchase right now. I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, happy printing. The S-Room...